Shane Fleming here, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm putting out a video explaining a spreadsheet that I gave away with a recent video I put out on Burr Real Estate Investment. I've linked that video below if you haven't got to see it, but today's video is just really explainer about how that spreadsheet can help you analyze residential investment deals in Ireland. But make sure you stay watching till the very end to see how you can get your hands on that spreadsheet too. So today I'm really just going to explain um, or go through this spreadsheet that uh, I put together a while ago that helps me kind of quickly analyze uh, residential investments. I generally kind of do it before I go out and have a look at a property so I know which ones I should be focusing on and which ones I should just uh, leave alone and not waste my time even going out to look at them. This spreadsheet which allows me to know if it's a good investment uh, or not. Um, so I want to kind of just explain how that works. Uh, it's not really the be all and end all to help you to decide if it's a good investment or not, but it's, it's a good tool to help you along the way. Um, so I'll just get onto it now. So this is the spreadsheet we use for residential investments under 1 million uh, here in Ireland. Uh, it's a spreadsheet which we put together and we sent out there recently. So this is kind of just an explainer on how the spreadsheet works and how you can actually analyze some of your investments. So the reason, just to start off, the reason uh, why it's for un under 1 million uh, residential investments is because the way we've set up our stamp duty here. So our stamp duty for this example is set up at 1% of the property price. So if you go over, that's set up for residential property under 1 million euro. If you go over a million euro, your stamp duty increases. And then if it's commercial property, again, you have a different uh, stamp duty ban. So it's important to realize that you, if you are looking at some different asset uh, or something over a million, you need to change your stamp duty element of this. But I suppose starting off, um, first thing you do is you can pop in the address of the property and you pop it in here. Um, and then you can pop in here. So the way we set it up, uh, you're asking price over here. So the way we set it up, we've set it up in two different kind of columns here. The first one is based on what the agent is asking for the property. So based on the asking price. And the second, co the second column here is actually based on what you might be willing to pay or what you feel is the top bid, top bid on the property. And I analyze it uh, that way. So first off, you might pop in is you'll pop in your the asking price so you'll put in say for this example you just put in four hundred thousand, and then you will have a consideration on what kind of rent you might be achieving here you may know yourself or you may need to uh, talk to an agent uh, if the property has been already rented there may be rent in place uh, and if it's been rented beforehand in ireland you may need to check that it's um if there's a rent cap on it and what rent you can apply. But say, for example, here, we're just going to say the annual rent is, um, or the monthly rent is 2,200, uh, multiplied by 12, and that automatically populates the rest of the, the spreadsheet in regards to um, net, uh, net, net annual rent and your net annual yields. So uh, the next thing you might do is you might come over here and you'd increase, put input your um, size of the unit. Uh, for this example, we have 750 square feet. So you can change that as you need to. Uh, you can change the number of beds, number of bathrooms. And then you will need to look at your uh, annual costs. So your annual costs will include your letting costs. So again, this will be um, your agent's fee that you might pop in here. This will be, uh, you can either rent it out yourself or you can use an agent or you can might know an agent who will do it for cheaper, but that's again, just a, 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 an average. Um, you may get it for cheaper or may cost more depending on the location, depending on the property. If you are advertising, this is the kind of your, your base uh, level advertising rate. If you're using daft, you may need to change that uh, depending on where you're, to put your advertisements or if you're putting up signboards. Um, 
your PRTB registration. That is every time you uh, enter into a new lease on your property, you have to register it with the PRTB. Uh, that's the, the fee if you um, submit the registration within the first month. If you're after one month, it actually doubles. Repairs we've allowed for 10% of um, the annual rent. Um, and we've allowed for uh, a void period as well. So the void period, you can depend on yourself how easy uh, it is going to be to let it. Um, you can divide the rent if it's, if we, we have it here, is it a month? But if you feel it's going to be less than a month, if you feel you're going to rent it out very quickly, you can again divide that for by more, depending if it's two weeks uh, that you might feel it might be vacant or you might take that out altogether if you don't feel you'll have a void period. Then your annual costs that um, you will need to allow for, especially within apartments, you'll have to allow for service charge. If it's not an apartment, it's in a house, you may not have a service charge. So you may need to reflect that in the annual repairs. So if it is a house, you may have more annual repairs because you might need to allow for roof, etc. Uh, insurance, again, you would need to speak to your broker on this, but this is an average that you would do for for. Uh, an apartment uh, for a house, you're probably talking a, a, a multiple of three to four times that if it's a house. Um, but this example is just done on a two bed apartment. Um, your local property tax, your LPT. This is again, it's a drop down uh, menu, but you'll be able to get your, your annual local property tax that you have for the property. Um, for say something like this, you're probably talking in around 350 that goes up based on the valuation uh, back a number of years ago in 2013 so that hasn't changed too much recently but it's good to know what your annual costs um, are uh, they may differ every year you may not have a letting every year but at least you know if you do have a letting every year this is what your annual cost would be on that basis this filters into your uh, net um, yield before tax um, he spelled wrong, but anyway, uh, then we have, so what you need to do here on this model here, on this column here is your legal fees. So on your legal fees, we have estimated on average what you're, what you're speaking in regards to legal fees is about 0.75% um, of the value of the property. That can go up to 1% or 1.5% depending on how complicated um, the transaction will be. Again, we've talked about the stamp duty being 1% in evaluation, residential valuation under um, a million. The additional costs here, this may be your additional costs in regards to additional legal costs uh, for registering the property. We've allowed for 0.3% of the actual overall cost. This allows for um, you to carry out a survey as well of the property. And this will, we've totaled up the property, your total acquisition costs here. Um, what we have done here on this example is uh, we have decided that we're going to have to spend another 10000 uh, to get the property upgraded. Um, that could be furniture, that could be painting, that could be changing the bathroom. And depending on the property you ha you're buying, you, you will need to add in an additional amount here uh, for an allowance in regards to what work needs to be done. If there's no work to be done, you just strip that out if there's a huge amount of work to be done you just need to allow for that so say if it's a new bathroom new kitchen and you need to allow for some additional works uh, you need to put it in there and i would do make sure you do the same on the other side of the column two so in this example what this actually comes out at is you've got a net um annual uh, rent of sixteen thousand. Uh, this is before tax, it breaks down as a net annual yield of 4.01% and you have a net um, monthly rent um, of 1,000, just over 1,400. Um, not amazingly good, uh, but that, that will depend on the property you've bought and what the, the area is you've bought in depending on where you feel that yield is. Obviously, you can see the gross yield on this property is about six point. Um, six percent. When you build in acquisition costs, you're down to um, six point two three percent. And when you build in your what your actual net uh, rental income will be when you've taken out all your actual annual costs, um, you're down to about a four percent yield. But obviously, that four percent yield can drastically change if you if you 
do not have a void period one month or one year and you've no letting fee the same year and then your your that's down to zero as well because you've no letting fee you've no letting fee, no letting costs here as well so that, that can actually go up to nearly close to five percent just on the basis that you haven't had a, a, a you haven't had to change the tenant so it is important to kind of realize um where that falls uh when you're bidding in terms of how often you have to let uh, because those costs um, are important to know each time. So down here at the bottom of the spreadsheet, what you will actually have as well is just a kind of a quick uh, loan to value calculator as in terms of your, if you're borrowing on this property, if you're borrowing on a generally a residential investment property, uh, ideally you wouldn't want to be going over 70% of the loan to value, but we've allowed for a drop down menu here, 50, 55, 60 and 65%. So just for argument's sake, in this example, we're going to go with, say, 60% loan to value. Um, and we will get, say, someone's been generous to us and given us a 4% loan. Uh, we're going to spread it over 25 years. That is, and the loan, pay, the loan is starting from, say, the loan is starting from today. And forget about that being in dollars, uh, but say your annual monthly uh, payments are um, just over 1,200. Uh, you have 300 payments based over 25 years, but you may be able to spread that to say 30 years. And that will drastically change your annual monthly payments. Same with your interest rates will also dramatically say if that's 3.5%, that will again drastically drop your monthly payments. Um, but you obviously your monthly payments go up as well as your total interest paid. So this is just a kind of a, a quick kind of tool. Obviously, you'll need to speak to your bank uh, or lender to, to get exact details on what you can actually achieve here. But um, your loan to value uh, ratio, your annual uh, interest rate, your loan period will actually have a huge impact on what your monthly repayments are, as well as your total interest paid. So, uh, but this is just a quick example to analyze um, a property investment here in Ireland, a residential one. So if you quickly, it's just a quick tool for you to look at some property investments that you may be thinking uh, of looking at and it's really realistically it's just a tool to give you um, some, some kind of help to see if you're actually going to go ahead and examine a property in more detail. So uh, thanks for watching all the way till the end uh, that may have been a little bit tedious but again it's just a kind of introduction tool about helping you decide what kind of properties to go after or, or which ones just to ignore completely uh, because some are good investments some are not and some may fit into your investment criteria and some may not but this is a quick tool that pretty much within five minutes you'll know if it's something you should be going after or not uh, but as i said if you stuck watching to the very end uh, i'll tell you how to get your hands on a copy of that um, spreadsheet so make sure you subscribe to this youtube channel and also follow us on instagram and DM me on Instagram with your email address and I will forward you on a copy of this spreadsheet. Thanks for watching. See you next time.